Hello and welcome back to the Doctor's Garage here on YouTube. So today you join me in my Land Rover Discovery 5 and unfortunately it is not working. It is completely broken today. In fact, it won't even start. To make matters slightly worse, I'm also about four hours from home on the first day of a holiday in which we need the car for to drive around in. So that's not a great scenario to be in. It is, I think, an electrical issue, but I'll tell you a bit more about the background of the problem after showing you exactly what it is. So usually with any fault that I've had with my Land Rover Discovery, it's usually been it, although there have been quite some significant ones, like a new engine that it had early on in its life, it's still usually had a problem that I can drive it to the garage for to get it looked at. And in this case, it's completely stopped today. And I've tried for the last two hours to start it and nothing has worked. So maybe you guys that are watching this might have some idea of how that might be fixed. And I'd love to hear your suggestions. Let me know in the comments below. But for now, I'm waiting for the RAC to come out to recover. I don't think they'll fix a car here, to be honest. I think it'll be a recovery job and then working out what we're going to do. But first, let me show you what the problem is and then I'll tell you a bit more about the background and history of the car if you're new to the channel. So when you get into the car, you put your foot on the brake, press ignition key like normal. Car comes on, like so, and then it completely powers itself off. Let me just shut that door. And again, if I take my foot off the brake, press the power button, car comes on, which is great. No particular warning lights, just the usual ones that come on. And then, foot on the brake, press the start button. Press the start button, and it just powers down. So, there you go. Press it on. On. Should start now. Nothing. Just powers itself off every single time. And it's done that for the past two hours, really. So, it literally just doesn't start something electrical that's not working properly. So as you can see, it's some sort of electrical issue. It literally just powers off as soon as it's about to start. And I actually had this same issue about, you might know if you've watched the channel for a while, probably about a year and a half ago, exactly the same problem. And what used to start it actually was giving it a push from the back or shunting the car to almost well, what I thought was happening is it was just clicking it into um, the starter motor into gear to be able to then fire and turn the engine and that seemed to work and I, I knew that because someone at Land Rover told me once when it was having this issue give it a good push from behind and then it will start and to be fair it worked and so I thought I've got this trick so at least I can use that but anyway we had the starter motor replaced about a year ago and that solved the problems it's had no issues ever since and at the moment I'm at 60,500 miles uh, in this Discovery owned it pretty much from new um, and although it's had a lot of issues in the last probably 10,000 miles, it's been pretty good. I haven't really had much of a problem and used it quite a lot day to day. So, yeah, I, I had a feeling it might be the starter motor again, but now all my little tricks of pushing the car, jumping on the tow bar, giving it a push from the front, from the back, side to side, everything, nothing starting it. And actually, this sort of issue started about two weeks ago. So it was doing it really intermittently, probably one start out of... 30 it was doing it and it would and then literally i'd get out of the car push it from behind and it would get going again fine it was all good so i knew that problem was happening before we come on holiday like any sensible person would i booked into land rover got booked into Mar a marshall's garage and to be fair marshall's have always been absolutely brilliant when it comes to land rover um servicing when it comes to land rover care they've given us it's been brilliant and i know a lot of people have a bad experience with land rover dealers but i can say that marshall's have been excellent to us generally so um, yeah, booked into them. They had it for a few days. They were really good. They got us actually an F pace on the same day we took it in because the car the car wasn't was less starting less frequently. And so I was thinking it needs to go in. Literally started it one day, drove it straight to Marshalls, gave them the car, and they sent us straight out with an F pace half an hour later, which was amazing for like two or three days. It was good to do a video on the F pace actually, but I didn't get a chance to do it. But I'll let you know my thoughts about that in another video. So yeah, we 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 had it. It went into the garage. They sort of looked at it in uh, overall had a look at everything to do with the car and they couldn't they plugged it in couldn't really see any particular error codes that were probably suggestive of anything particular but what they did find is some premature corrosion of some of the connections underneath the car and they cleaned them all up got them all sorted plugged them all back in and said this wiring harness could be due to it could be you know affecting the starter motor and kind of the engine style of things so i think now we've cleaned them up, this will fix it, we'll order you a new wiring harness and we'll get that sorted out for you and it'll all be done and sorted. 
Now we have the, because this car is now, it's a 2018 car, so it's out of the Land Rover warranty, but we always pay for the Land Rover extended warranty because I think it's worth it, and it has definitely been worth it in the time that we've had the vehicle. The plan was basically, we've cleaned up all the connections, the car will start, it started in their garage absolutely fine, they tested it, and they said, look, go on holiday, have a great time, it'll work because the wiring harness is now clean, and we'll order a new harness and book it back in when you come back, and it'll be fine. It won't last you, like, for a year, but this cleanup we've done will last you a good amount of time. And I think they were sort of convinced that that was the issue, but it wasn't very clear either that completely was. Anyway, the car started fine for the few days before the holiday. It was all good. Then we came away and literally it, last night it did a bit of a weird start thing, got out, pushed it, started first time. Great. But then the last two times it's been a bit more hit or miss. And then this morning it just completely doesn't start. Two hours of pushing it in all directions and it just, nothing is happening at all. So... It's completely broken now. There's nothing we can do. Um, we have RAC cover, so we didn't have the Land Rover Assist with the cover we've got. Even though we've got the higher tier of the approved warranty cover, the extended one, we don't have a Land Rover Assist with that. We've got RAC. So RAC are coming out to see if they can do anything with the car. I think it'll be a recovery job. But that's where we are at the moment with it. Now, for those that are new to the channel, this car I've had, like I say, it's kind of an ownership journey of 60,000 miles, really. And it's, I absolutely love the discovery. There is no doubt, I think it's one of the best looking and most practical, perfect cars for us. With two young children, it literally does everything I could possibly want a car to do. However, as we all Land Rovers seem to have, it's had its fair share of problems and certainly a lot more problems that I've had with, than I've had with my older Land Rover Defender. It, it's had so many issues over the time. And like I say, Land Rover always been great with us, always sorted it out, always got it fixed. It's been pretty good overall, the journey that I've had. Um, but obviously this one now is a whole new problem and it's a whole new level of anxiety in regards to whether it's going to be covered under the warranty, what the actual issue is. I don't even know if it got taken to a dealer, if they could work out what the problem was with it. So it's like 60 odd thousand, well, six, was it 60,500 miles at the moment? I'm always wondering when's going to be the time to get rid of this car. When does it get too old? When does it not go on anymore? Maybe look at changing it for something else. And I'm always on the lookout for that. But it's so hard to find a car to replace a Discovery 5, to be honest. Um, and like I said in the previous video, an old Defender 110, I actually quite would like. I think that old um, mechanical way of well, even starting the car with keys rather than all these buttons always seems to work a lot better, in my opinion. So, so yeah, I'm waiting for RAC today. Let's see what they say. Let's see what where, where, where it goes next. But at the moment, that's the position we're in. So stuck again in my Land Rover Discovery 5 without it being able to start at all. Any suggestions you've got of why that might be happening, why it might not be starting, if you're a Land Rover mechanic or whatever, let me know in the comments below. I've read some things actually about it being something to do with the ABS. Because one thing I've probably noticed is the brake pedal gets a bit stiff when this is all going on. And I wonder if it's something to do with, before the car starts, it does a lot of checks, and it's something to do with the brake fluid pressure. I don't really know. It could be absolutely nonsense. But maybe it's the brake fluid pressure that's causing something and the ABS isn't like ready to go and therefore it doesn't fire. But saying that, I also don't know. There's no error lights. There's nothing really to say when you plug it in. So yeah. Kind of waiting to see what happens now. Where else are, where's the car going to go? We're like, say, four hours from home, four hours from my local dealer. Going to be carless if um, this gets taken away. And to make matters worse, we're also caravanning. So <laughs> I've got to tow a caravan back home four hours without the discovery. So don't know how it's going to happen because I can't imagine the hire car, the rental car is going to have a tow bar. So a lot of things to deal with, but let's see how we go. I'll keep you guys updated and uh, yeah. I'm going to see you in the next hour when the ROC guys comes and then let you know how we're getting on. So as you can probably hear, the Discovery is now running and probably the worst bit about it is we've waited for three hours this morning uh, for the car, well two hours of it not working, ROC came within the hour which was great. Literally the guy came and said what's the problem with it, I jumped in the car, pressed the start button and uh, it started and it started five times in a row since then. So this guy thinks I'm an idiot but I just, I don't know what to do with this thing. It is an absolute nightmare when it has these intermittent issues that no one seems to be able to diagnose. Anyway, he's plugged it in. So let's see what error codes come up today. So I'm not really sure what to say, to be honest, but it's working at the moment. Um, and the RIC guy came out and said, right, okay, what's the problem? And so I jumped in the car, pressed the start button, and the car started, and then it did it again and again and again and kept demonstrating it started. Anyway, 
what was interesting from all that is that he plugged it in anyway and thought, let's just see if there's any error codes that come up. And he found an error code that said it was intermittent with the steering lock and something to do with the transmission as well. So sensors in both the steering lock and the transmission. And so that's maybe an indication that those things are erroring every so often. And so when they're erroring, then the car can't start because before the car can start, it runs through all these checks. If the steering is locked, for example, or the transmission isn't isn't recognizing as being in park, then the car won't start. Whereas let's say in my Defender, if you say start with the key and it is in gear, it will just jump forward, right? But this won't. The problem is you can't see what those things are that are not identified or not signing off. So that makes it really difficult to actually know what the problem is. So that was yesterday the RAC were here and the car started. We ran the car yesterday. This morning I've just been out and I've actually just been somewhere for an hour waiting for it to start again. And the only thing that seems to make a difference to me now is if you park it and let's say you try to start it again and it doesn't start, there's no chance of it starting for that period of time. What you have to do or what I've, what I've been doing is leaving it for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So literally I went out this morning, parked it at a shop, <laughs> got back in the car it wouldn't start so literally left it went for a walk for 20 minutes got back in the car and it started first time don't know what that's about but it seems like it needs a little bit of a rest between starting the car so something's going on i'm not sure what it is gonna take it to land rover when i get back from being away and gonna see what the deal is what is the problem and obviously mention to them about the steering lock and also the transmission as well because obviously there's something up with that and so i need to get to the bottom of that basically so yeah that's my story so far with discovery 5 make sure you subscribe like this video let me know what you think in the comments below if you've got any suggestions any advice anything like this you've had with your land rover let me know and uh, i'll keep you guys updated